Hey, welcome back everybody. So today I got to explain callbacks in JavaScript. A callback is a function that is passed as an argument to another function. They are used to handle asynchronous operations such as reading a file, network requests, or interacting with databases. These activities take some time to complete. Now with JavaScript, we don't necessarily wait for a process to finish before continuing with the rest of the program. For example, if we were to read a file, if it takes a long time to read that file, JavaScript might continue on with the rest of the program. We might attempt to display the contents of that file before we're finished reading it. That's where callbacks come in. We're telling JavaScript, hey, when you're done, call this next. When you're done reading the file, then display the contents only after that process is complete. I'll give you a few examples of the syntax of a callback. We'll start with something really simple. We'll create a function to display the word hello. This will be the hello function. Then I will console.log the word hello. So I can invoke this function, hello, to execute it. Hello. What if we were to create a function for goodbye? Function goodbye. We will console.log goodbye. Okay, after hello, let's invoke goodbye. We have hello, then goodbye. What if my hello function takes a lot of time to process? Well, JavaScript isn't necessarily going to wait around before executing the goodbye function. I'm going to add a few lines of code. You don't need to copy this. These few lines of code are going to make us wait for three seconds. You don't need to write this down, but do pay attention. We will execute the hello function followed by the goodbye function. But we're going to pretend that our hello function takes a little bit of time to process. So now we have goodbye already executed, followed by hello, but it should be the other way around. I would like to guarantee that the goodbye function follows after the hello function. Well, I can do that by adding a callback to the goodbye function after the hello function is complete. We'll get rid of this goodbye function invocation. To use a callback, you pass a function as an argument to another function. We will pass the goodbye function as an argument to the hello function. So within the set of parentheses, type the name of the function, goodbye. Now be sure you don't add a set of parentheses after the function name, you'll call it right away. We are passing the name of the function as an argument, but we need a matching parameter. I will name this parameter callback. After everything within this function is complete, let's take our callback, then invoke it by adding a set of parentheses. Invoke meaning call. All right, now let's see what happens. We have our hello function followed by the goodbye function in that order. Let's create another function. What about a leave function? We'll tell somebody to leave. Console.log leave. I will pass the name of this function as an argument to the hello function. Leave is now our callback. After executing the hello function, we will execute our callback. And in this case, it's the leave function. Let's create another function for wait. Function wait. Console.log wait. We'll pass the name of the function as an argument to the hello function. Wait is now our callback. We will execute the hello function followed by the wait function. So by using callbacks, we are guaranteeing that the function passed in will execute next. You can pass callbacks as well as other arguments to a function. Let's go over a second example. I will create a function to sum two numbers together. X comma Y. I'll also add a callback. Callback X comma Y. We have three parameters total. Within the sum function, we will create a local variable of result add X plus Y. And then I will call my callback. Then I'll pass the result as an argument to the callback function. Then I will create a function to display the result to my console. Display console. There is one parameter. We have a result argument we're receiving. Then console.log my result. All right. Now we will invoke the sum function but we have three arguments that we need to pass in. A callback, a value for x, and a value for y. 
let's invoke the display console function as a callback. Again, be sure to not add a set of parentheses after the name because then you'll invoke it right away. X will be one, Y will be two. And let's see the result. The result is three. So within our sum function, calculate the result first, then after that process is finished, then display the result to the console. Let's create a separate function to display the result to our document object window, our web page basically. Uh, let's pretend that this wasn't here. I'll create an h1 element with an ID of my h1. I will create a separate function display page to display on the web page. I think display DOM would be more appropriate, but I haven't explained what the document object model is yet. So let's just work with display page. We will accept a result. I will change the text content of the my h1 element. Document dot get element by ID. The ID was my h1. We will change the text content to equal our result that we receive. As a callback, we will use the display page function. Display page. There, and the result is three. After this calculation processes, execute the callback. And this time we are passing it to the display page function that we created. All right, everybody, so that's a callback. It's a function that is passed as an argument to another function. They're used to handle asynchronous operations, operations that may take a variable amount of time, such as reading a file, network requests, or interacting with databases. We're not exactly sure when these processes are going to complete. By using a callback, we can ensure that a function executes after these processes are complete and not before, accidentally. All we're doing is saying, hey, when you're done, call this next. We'll have more practice with callbacks, especially in the upcoming topics. And well, everybody, those are callbacks in JavaScript.